Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media, and today I've got a fun video for you guys. It is hot takes time, but this time I asked you guys a very specific question. A very specific question. It was, what is the greatest EDM album of all time? Had some good responses, had some not great responses. So let me just say this now, if you don't see your thing in this video, there's one of three reasons why your hot take was in this video. One, I haven't actually listened to the album, which was some part of it. I haven't listened to every EDM album that's ever existed. Uh, two, it wasn't a hot take. On some platforms, I specifically said no Daft Punk and no Porter Robinson because those are universally loved and people still responded with Daft Punk and Porter Robinson. And uh, three, your uh, take just wasn't good. So uh, you can choose which one yours fall into. Dead Mouse's W16 album. I know Joel said this was an album he slapped together, but the songs still feel all complementary to one another. Starting off the album with songs like Fourware and Cat Thruster set up the song for an emotional but retrospective journey. Following up with songs like Glish and Imaginary Friends solidify the continuity of weary and wobbly soundscapes while holding its retrospective characteristic. And then capping off the album with Three Pound Chicken Wing and Welk then is such a spine-chilling progressed uh, experience like no other. Seriously, those two songs are such are two of the spookiest and dark songs I've ever heard in EDM. And I didn't even mention Let Go, which, I mean, you just did, uh, which I will clarify is my favorite prog house song of all time, which is saying a lot. And, uh, having incredibly uplifting grab its vocals and beautiful harmonic orchestral musicality being, pre being present in the intro, making it uh, the best in the album. I suppose you could say it's a small review, and this is why my favorite EDM, this is why it's my favorite EDM album of all time. Yes, that is definitely a small review. And uh, well, I did enjoy the project. Uh, I, I I don't think it's Dead Mouse's best, uh, and I also don't think uh, any of Dead Mouse's albums can really be the best of all time in terms of EDM, uh, just because it's just for a slightly different EDM audience. If that makes sense, uh, Dead Mouse is is so cinematic or orchestral with this stuff, and it's not like it's not like classic EDM. If that makes sense, half the time it, it is a little glitchy and electronic here and there, but it's uh, it's it doesn't really. If you were to characterize something as the greatest album, EDM album of all time, I, I, I wouldn't put it in that category. But, I mean, Dead Mouse is definitely one of the running. So, a great, great mini review on that, and uh, not, not a bad take. Best EDM album is easily Rootkit Recursion. I love that this album is seamless, even without any transitions between songs. Uh, every single vocal performance is either perfect or very close to it. There isn't a single miss, and I don't know if Rootkit will ever be able to top this collection of songs. Um, I, I didn't like Recursion. Uh, not that I didn't like Recursion, I think I gave it a 6 out of 10 last year. Uh, it wasn't, like, it wasn't anything crazy. I don't know what you're seeing in Recursion that you saw in any other piece of music. Uh, only New is the, the, the only song that I thought was really of any sustenance, um, that was incredibly different from what Rootkit has sort of done. Um, it just felt pretty derivative and not like there was anything super interesting. Um, I thought all of his Monster Cat songs were like way better than anything on Recursion. Um, and I think they hold up even better today, his older Monster Cat stuff, than some of the, than half the songs in this album. So, um, that's definitely a hot take. Californian Dreams by Vichy. Uh, yeah, no, that album was like, I mean, it's synth wavy and it's got an atmosphere to it, but to say it's the best EDM album of all time is ridiculous. Tristram's With Love Until We Die is an emotional piece of art. Lyrics are beyond fantastic, and I believe his pop style is better than most of his dubstep Electro Monster Cat releases. Um, so I brought this one up for an interesting take that I'd love to hear your guys' opinion on. Uh, you say uh, for uh, his pop style better than most of his dubstep stuff. Um, is this album EDM? Like, is this album EDM? is With Love Until You Die EDM. I would char characterize it as cinematic electropop. And so that's that's where I would say it is. Um, and so it, in terms of being electropop, I would say it's probably uh, as EDM as Porter Robinson's Nurture, which is still very poppy. Um, so I mean, in terms of EDM, I'm not sure. I personally love this album. I love this album. I think it's phenomenal. I love everything about Tristam's stuff here. Uh, it's probably one of my top albums of all time, uh, but I still wouldn't say, I wouldn't categorize it as like full EDM. I wouldn't say this is like the greatest EDM album I, I know or my favorite EDM album. I would say it's one of my favorite albums and it, it teeters the line between EDM. So I want to know what you guys think is with Love Until You Die an EDM album or not. Yes or no? In my opinion, Kashmir's Harmonica Andromeda album is the best EDM album from a production and story standpoint. It's just absolutely incredible. 
Uh, so you guys all begged me for a while to do a review on Harmonica Andromeda, and I finally didn't do it. <laughs> and uh, I never got to it, but uh, I did listen through it all once. I didn't do a uh, an unofficial even review on it. I haven't done my album of the year score for it and everything, but uh, I did not think it was interesting. Uh, I didn't think it was crazy in any one way or another. It felt pretty baseline, like just above average album. Uh, I also didn't relate to a lot of the thematics and storyline elements of it, of uh, Kashmir being his, having his uh, Indian background, so I didn't relate to it in that sense. Um, and so maybe if I had more of that ethnic background or more uh, attachment to that like area of the world, maybe I would enjoy it more, but I just thought it was pretty average album. I feel like I'm going to get a hate for this answer, but as a melodic bass slash dubstep fan, I got to go with Awake by Lenium. For an album that is days away from being four years old, the quality of production is still on par with the 2021 standards of quality, and the key sounds present on the album still play such a massive factor in the scene. Examples such as heart-tugging powerful vocal performances, emotionally sound guitar riffs, and impactful soft forward drops. Um, although those things have been way before Awake. Um, I, yeah, and I know I cut off some of these comments uh, because just for time's sake, uh, but I like Ashes, I think, is better than this one quite a bit. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Uh, I thought his albums got progressively <laughs> worse and worse. Um, but yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah, like I, I get it. Um, I, I definitely think this was better than Ascend, um, for sure. But, uh, to say it's the greatest EDM album of all time is, is, is definitely a hot take. Silence We Are Dust is really just blowing everything else out of the water for me personally. It's not a hot take, but it's worth it to get it there. Um, I would say it's a hot take. Uh, I did get a few comments like this, um, but I, I mean, I would say it's a hotter take. Um, it, I would be interested to know, uh, because I said like no Daft Punk or more, no Porter or more, Maddion's kind of in the same boat. Um, do people that really like this album, do you think that this is better than like Maddie on Adventure? Do you think this is better than Worlds or Nurture? Do you think this is better than Discovery or Random Access Memories? People that really like We Are Dust Silent, do you like it more than that? Um, I think the album is like good. Uh, I don't think it is like great. I don't think it's like godlike. Um, it, it, it is not my style for the most part though, so. Nero, Welcome Reality. Overall, so many well-produced songs with amazing vocals that still hold up 10 years later. Also has a cool narrative to follow along with the album flows, uh, or the album flows well from start to end. And definitely a huge influence on a variety of modern EDM today, which I feel like it doesn't get enough credit for, or at least enough recognition for. You know, I'm I'm a semi on board with this one. Um, I loved Welcome Reality. I was a little behind uh, the scene on that when I got into EDM. The album had sort of come out uh, at that point, so I went back and listened to it. Uh, and so uh, I didn't. I wasn't a part of the release or the um the pushing out of the album uh i wasn't in the scene at that point but uh, i really i really did enjoy it i i agree with some of your points here uh to say it's the greatest of all time i probably not i think it still does hold some influence today um especially that i know it doesn't really count but the the skrillex remix being on this album or at least the bonus kind of track um is was a big part of the edm scene now at one point and um i mean that's just kind of skrillex in general but i agree with you i think nero gets a lot less credit now days than they, they should. Riot's Dogma Resistance. Although I understand most of its critiques, I find most of them stem from most of the singles being revealed before its release and there not being enough fresh content. However, taking uh, after taking a step back, each song is fantastic, heavy bro step, which is uh, packed to the brim with energy and great sound design with other styles uh, sprinkled in to add a bit of spice. The additional bonus track, Take um, take That, being a fantastic breath of fresh air from Riot and against uh, and adds and again adds to the album's overall quality. Alongside all this, there are two good interludes with a fantastic movie-like intro. Overall, an amazing piece of work. Um, I would agree that I think Dogma Resistance is quite a strong album. Uh, I didn't understand the critique about it not being, or so much stuff being released beforehand. I don't think that's a good critique for the album as a whole, because the album as a whole you need to listen to as like a whole. So it doesn't matter when the stuff gets released, but your, your critique of it should be as the whole project. And so I'd, I've never understood those critiques. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's not my bread and butter style of music I like to listen to, but um, it was solid. Uh, I definitely wouldn't say it's the greatest EDM album of all time. I definitely think We Are Dust was better than Dogma Resistance though. Might get some backlash, but honestly, Welcome to the City of Oz is actually amazing. How Justin O manages to tell a story via his older uh, releases, plus some really cool atmospheric transition is really uh, cool to me. And the dystopian 
City-esque vibe is pulled off spectacularly. Uh, I agree. I definitely agree on this one. Um, I don't think, sorry, I don't think it's the greatest EDM album of all time, but I I loved this project. I was a huge fan of Welcome to the City of Oz and the, uh, the video storytelling, the graphical storytelling of the project in the music videos is fantastic. I thought it was well put together. And even though it was put together across like, what, two and a half years? Um, again, I don't really care about that. I just care about the end product. And um, I, I was a huge fan. Um, I, yeah, for a debut album, that was, that was, that was solid. It deserves some more love. Well, none of the songs in Space Cadet are my absolute top 10 favorites on their own. Together, they make such an amazing musical journey with the way that they each seamlessly transition into each other. It feels like a massive continuous adventure and it never ceases to satisfy my ears and mind. From the way uh, it covers more genres like ambiance, house, chill, etc., I just find it to be such a rewarding 46 minute musical experience that nothing can match as a whole. Nigel Good's Space Cadet is my favorite Monster Cat EDM album, and I would love for him to come back and release soon. I know it's loved by many in the Monster Cat community, but maybe it might be a stretch to call it the best EDM album for some people. Um, yeah, I would say it's a little bit of a stretch to call it that, but that is the point of the Hot Takes video, so that you, you've done it perfectly. But uh, Nigel Good is fantastic. This is a solid project, and I think these kind of ambient, more chill projects don't get as much love as some others do. Uh, I mean, we talked about Dead Mess at the beginning, which is kind of falls into that category, some songs here and there, but uh, this was this was a fantastic project for sure. And uh, I would put it up there, I would put it up there personally for myself as one of the top EDM albums for me. Pendulum Immersion. I I say this as Immersion has stood the test of time. It's uh, 11 years old and is still widely regarded as one of Pendulum's greatest albums. It is iconic for its time, hasn't fallen to early tropes of sounding outdated, and is still a jam to this day. Uh, fun fact, I actually just got re-into Immersion uh, since the, like... Uh, like early 2021. I don't know why, but I just went back and I was like, wow, this album still slaps. Uh, so I, I agree. I definitely agree that this is a, this is a solid project. Uh, and I do think it stands the test of time for sure. So, um, I enjoy it quite a bit. And again, another one of personally that of mine that I would say is, is up there for my own personal top uh, EDM album of all time. Another one that's up there personally for me, Lost, Lost, Lost by Mr. Fiji Ouija is one of the greatest EDM albums ever. The melodies, atmosphere, and production are all fantastic. It is super underrated. It perfectly captures that Mr. Fiji vibe. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I love Fiji. I love this album. I think that, again, the chill stuff just doesn't give enough love. And uh, this one, whoo. If you have not listened to this, you need to go listen to it. Um, sadly, because it wasn't on Monster Cat, a lot of people, I don't think, went and listened to Mr. Fiji Ouija stuff off-label, but you need to go give this a listen. Virtual Riot Simulation. This is a musical masterpiece. If you like house, it has house. If you like future bass, it has future bass. If you like dubstep or rhythm, it has that too. If you like rap, it has rap. Plus, log in and log out really seal the projects start to end with an emotion I've never really I knew I had. Just amazing. Uh, a lot of people said uh, Simulation 2, I think, in this list. Um, it was, <laughs> I actually asked this question as Simulation was like coming out like the day before it came out. And so uh, the fact that someone said this, I, he actually went back and, and edited the, the comment. And so I think this is after listening to it more so thoroughly. But uh, I'm interested to see how this one stands the test of time. Uh, I, I enjoyed the album. I didn't think it's not my favorite. It's not my absolute favorite style. But um, I think it is a good uh, like checkpoint or a good, like, yeah, a good checkpoint in EDM history, I think, um, to kind of, if there was an album that I would say uh, encapsulates the more rhythm style that is today, I would maybe be the Crisis Vision uh, by Must Die and this one, Simulation. So I think in terms of EDM history, this one definitely, uh, I, I think will stand some test of time. After Hours by Overwork is an unbelievably great LP. Basically, I came to EDM through this album, so it means a lot to me. The first track, Daybreak, may still be one of my favorite songs of all time. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a good project. Um, it's another one of those that's kind of edging the line of EDM and not EDM. It has that more of that uh, cinematic sound to it that's a little different than Tristram's, like I said earlier. But uh, still, still a good album. I, I wouldn't say it's the greatest of all time, uh, but uh, a solid one for sure. And finally, uh, AU5 uh, Divinorium. I think that's how you say it, Di Divinorium. Uh, each track on it sounds unique and really interesting, but it maintains cohesion throughout. Really well mixed and mastered, and there's not a single song on it that I couldn't listen to on repeat. Uh, AU5 went for a while there, just creating like album after album every year that was just like solid. And uh, I think this is actually the best of of his run of albums there that I that are, were I can't remember if they were self released or not, but uh, Div 
Di Divinorium? I'm not sure how to say that correctly. Um, but uh, that was my favorite of all of the kind of stuff that he's released. And so uh, I, I sort of agree with this. Um, they, they are fantastic. And this is definitely one of the better uh, melodic dubstep albums out there, I would say. And so if you love melodic dubstep, you like AU5 sound, um, this is definitely one to listen to. So this is, this is not a bad take. And that is it for Hot Takes episode four. For, I believe the best album of all time. Uh, and if you know where this is going to go, you will see a comment show up soon on my socials about the next hot take. So uh, be ready for that if you know where that's going in comparison to what this video was. So I'm Bowtie Media and I will see you guys in another video.